In this video, we're going to make a Reddit bot using Python. First things first, we've got to install a package that abstracts basically all the hard stuff for us. And to do that, we're going to run pip install pra. And we can see that I already have it installed. Pra stands for the Python Reddit API wrapper. So as it says, it's a Python package that allows for simple access to Reddit's API. Naming is the hardest thing to do in coding, and well, that sounds pretty good to me. Hey, it does the work for me. That's perfect. Now, let's jump back to our code, and we have pra imported, and we have os imported. Now, we can start interacting with Reddit, right? Well, kinda. First, we'll need to actually create a bot on Reddit so we can interact with Reddit using specific credentials. To do that, we can go, I have this Jake A test bot created on Reddit. We can go to reddit.com slash prefs slash apps. Once we're here, you can see that uh, we have this, are you a developer option? We can go ahead and click this. Once we're in this stage, we can name it. So we can name it Jake A uh, test bot. We want this to be a script. We can just type test here, not test set. And a, reader, redirect, a redirect URL, we can just redirect to Reddit. And then we can click create app. Great. So now we have the, uh, basically this is the client ID and this is the secret. Well, that was pretty easy, right? Well, we're not quite done yet. So the next thing we need to do is allow for pra to know what we're acting on, basically which app we're using. So in order to do this, we're going to create a pra.ini or a pra.ini file. If we go here, I have one that's kind of pre-populated. Now this one, if you go to its documentation right here, you can actually see this is the pra documentation. This actually is developed by Reddit, so you can trust this, but you can basically just copy all of this and you can then add in specific information for bots. So let's jump back to our code. So I have a Jake A test bot configured here. We don't have a client ID, we don't have a secret, and we don't have our password set yet at all. Now, in order to do this, we can go back here, we can grab our, our client ID, we can paste that in, oops, paste that in here. We can, oops, wrong one. We can then go to our secret, make sure we get the whole thing. Go back here, paste the secret, and then we can type in our password. Perfect. Now, one thing to mention is that the client secret and the client ID are basically what allow pra or any developer to act as your app or your bot. Given this, do not publish the pra.ini file to GitHub or anything that's public. So for instance, the examples here, these, do, these no longer exist. Uh, and you can try and use the one I have configured here with these if you really want, but I'm gonna be deleting this after this tutorial, so you can't. So go for it if you want, I guess. All right, so where does this pra.ini file or pra.ini file actually live? It just lives within the same directory as wherever your Python script is gonna exist. You might also notice that we have this Jake A test bot uh, within these brackets here. This is how you're going to basically reference from your Python. You're gonna reference this configuration using this name. So you can name this whatever you want, but just make sure it's the same within your Python file. Now, let's jump back to our Python. So I've got a basic bot laid out already, uh, and I'm just gonna kind of go over what it's doing. So we're, basic, we're going to create a Reddit variable. We're going to initialize pra.reddit using Jake a test bot. This is the thing that needs to match your any file. Next, we're going to reference a subreddit. We're going to be testing with Jake a bot testing. If you're following along with this tutorial, feel free to use the exact same. 
This is a subreddit I have made explicitly for this. So test at your heart's content. Now, jumping back to the code, I have a few variables that I'm initializing here. I have a substream, I have a comment stream, and then I have subs I've replied to, comments I've replied to, and they're just empty arrays. Next, I have a function that is reading in the comments and subs that I've replied to, uh, and basically just populating this list. Uh, and it's going to be reading these from files that it's just going to be uh, that are going to exist within the same directory. Then I have a, one that saves the data. So whatever is in this list, it's going to save to. Finally, I am reading the data. So I'm actually calling this function to populate this list. Then I have the more important uh, function here called listen. So what this is going to do is I'm creating a substream and I'm creating a comment stream. What this will do is it will take any submissions from this specific sub, so from the Jake A bot testing sub, and when this bot is running, it will get any new submissions. And this pause after basically allows us to loop uh, in a single loop both of these streams. Skip existing just means that we won't loop over anything or we won't get anything that has happened in the past. You can remove this if you'd like, but because I don't want to just spam things that already exist, I want to just test as the as the bot is running. I'm just going to keep this here. Now, I'll talk about this try block in a second here, but so we have a while loop here, while true, so this will just go forever. And then we have a for loop where for submission in substream. So this will loop over any submissions within this substream. Then we're checking if the submission is none. So if one does not exist, if it's just an empty object, then we're just going to break. This break will break out of this for loop. If the submission does exist and it is not. So basically, if the submission exists because it's, it's not in here, then we're going to check its ID and we're going to check that it's not already in this subs that we've replied to. Then we're going to just print some metadata. So the self text is the uh, text of the submission, like the title. Then we're going to add the subs we've replied to, the ID to that to that uh, array or that list we have there. Then we're going to print that we're responding to it with the self.text. And finally, we are actually going to go ahead and reply. We're going to say funbot is here to have fun. Maybe we'll name this Jake a test bot instead. That sounds better. We'll replace this one too. Now we're just basically doing the exact same thing for comments. So if comment is none, we're just going to break out of this loop. And then if comment.id is not in this and the comments author is not our bot. The reason for this is because if we remove this, then we will start responding to our own comments. So we will basically comment on our to ourselves forever. It's like, are you talking to yourself? Are you talking to yourself? Are you talking to yourself? That kind of situation. So in order to not get into that, we're going to um, make sure that we don't do anything if we're actually the author. So one thing I've actually just noticed right here is that we are missing our comments replied to. So we will append the comment.id to this list. There we go. Now, if, if this is done, once we get to the end of this for loop, we will go back again and we will continue to check. So we will check on for both of these forever. In order to get out of a loop in Python, typically what you do is you press control C, which is considered a keyboard interrupt and that kills your program. The issue with this is we're basically storing all of the comments we've replied to and we wanna make sure that we write this to a file. But if we send a keyboard interrupt, it's just going to kill our program and we can't do anything. So instead, in order to stop this loop, we'll still use a keyboard interrupt using control C. But because we have this within a try block, we have an accept statement here where we're catching a keyboard interrupt. So it will continue to try this until it gets a keyboard interrupt. When that happens, we will get this keyboard interrupt and then we will call save data. So in theory, you could kind of like 
have this call like listen and just go forever and never allow keyboard interrupt to stop the program, which you probably shouldn't do unless you're an evil person, I guess. Um, but in this case, we're just gonna call save data so that we can be sure that we're saving our information so that the next time we run, we know that we don't have to uh, re potentially respond to some comments that already exist. This is not as useful if we have this skip existing, but it can still be useful if we wanna run, if we wanna remove this and then make sure that we're not commenting on things that uh, we have already looked into. Now, this text file is maybe not a great long-term solution. Maybe you want to store this in a database or do something a little bit more practical, I guess, uh, because this will just get very, very long eventually if it's an active uh, sub or subreddit. So I guess that's up to you. But to start, I think this is a great solution because it's simple and relatively scalable until you get a super large subreddit. Or if you're, you know, if you're, if you're going after like, like all, or all, then this will fill up extremely quickly. But we're not going to do all. We're just going to do our little test. All right. So let's go ahead and run the bot. So fun bot, run. So we're not getting any output. Is that okay? Yes, because nothing's happening. We're not printing anything when nothing's happening. So. What we can do now is let's go post something on Reddit. So here we are on our subreddit and let's say, uh, let's create a post called hi YouTube and let's post this. Great. Now let's go back to our bot and we can wait a few seconds here and we should see some form of output basically printing off this information here. Oh, there we go. So one thing that this is actually saying here is that uh, it looks like Pra was updated since I initially wrote this, which is actually surprising because I wrote it a couple of days ago. Uh, but it's basically just saying that submission.reply, you should provide a body keyword to specify what type of information you would like to be responding with. So you can just basically do that by saying reply equals, and this, I think this is the same, uh, the same is true for comment. Oh, sorry, body equals. Great. But uh, we did go ahead and do this, right? We have we actually printed off this thing here. We printed off the score, which is how many upvotes it has. We printed off the self text, which uh, is empty. To be honest, I thought this would not be that, but that's okay. And we can go ahead and come here and refresh. And we can see that our JK test bot has just posted. JK Testbot is here to have fun. Great, we can upvote, we're good to go. Now, say we want to say, wow, thank you. Wow, thank you. And we can go ahead and reply. Now, if we go back down here, we can see that we aren't getting a new one yet. Oh, there it is, here we go. Wow, thank you, the person who has done this. So not me, the comment author, or me, but not the bot me. And then we're saying that we're responding to the comment and same thing here, just respond with the body. I haven't restarted the, the bot, which is why it's still complaining about that. Now we can come here, we can refresh this and we can see JK test bot sees this. Perfect. So I just killed the bot here. I just did the con uh, control C and you can now see that we have our two files here and these are going to match the two things that we've responded to pretty great this bot works and it's something you can certainly build off of i'll leave i'll have the code down in the comments however if you want something that's maybe a little bit more thorough i have a bot that i've been working on myself which basically allows you to have a bunch of different information set up so you can, I'm just playing with the idea of having like an RPG game. Um, I have a bot class that handles a bunch of different stuff for you. It still has a listen function, still does the keyboard interrupt, has specific logging setup, and can handle flare types. So you can have flares within your subreddit and stuff like that. This bot is by no means complete. It's something that I'll continue to work on as I have time, but I think it's something that's pretty fun. 
Now, if you wanna start from scratch or start from this bot, uh, feel free to go and grab uh, the bot here. All the code is here, it's totally free. So go ahead and grab that. The link for this will be in the description below. That's it. You've now made a Reddit bot using Python. Pretty easy, right? Packages make stuff pretty easy because you kind of don't have to write everything. One of the great things with Pra is that it actually handles all the auth stuff for you because frankly, that can be pretty complicated. So really quickly, I just wanted to say that I'm going to shift my posting schedule to be a little bit less frequent. The reason for that is because I wanna keep quality high on this channel as much as I can. And I find that if I'm posting something that I may not feel like I've invested enough time into, then the quality is not really where I want it to be. For instance, this is the second time I've filmed this video and edited the video because the first one I didn't really think was good enough. So just as a heads up, the next thing I'm probably going to be looking into is kind of learning Unity. I know I was going into some more data structures type of stuff. And if there's people who want to learn that type of stuff, please comment down below and I will absolutely look into it. So remember, I'm Jake, you're awesome. And this has been making a Reddit bot in Python. Thanks for watching. Cheers.